Hi you guys. I just wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up from my live stream yesterday. I know that those videos are really long and um, you have to have a lot of time to sit down and watch the whole thing. So I wanted to make a video um, in case you don't have the time or the patience to watch those long videos from the stream. And what we did yesterday was just a basic ATC. I think a lot of times we get so involved in crafting that we forget about the people that are just beginning and we don't just do a basic video so that they feel comfortable if you're just starting out or if you feel intimidated by it. And it really is a simple process. If you don't know what an ATC is, it's just a simple um, artist trading card. And an artist trading card is the same size as an insert for a pocket letter. It's a two and a half by three and a half um, piece of art that you create and trade with um, like artists. And there are Facebook pages that you can join. There's off Facebook um, type internet sites that you can also join. And um, you just swap them back and forth, trade them with people. Um, there are some people that sell them. I'm not involved with any of that, so I don't even know where you would go about selling them. Um, but I have heard that there are people. You can back it on something that has somewhat of a body, which is advisable. You don't want it to be really flimsy. And I just use this Recollections cardstock that is 65 pounds weight to it. Um, you can use cereal boxes. You can recycle stuff if, to back it. Um, but I typically back all of mine with this particular black cardstock. But you can use whatever you have on hand. And you just simply want to cut these down to two and a half by three and a half. So I cut all of mine down the same way. I cut them first into vertical strips, two and a half. And then I have this strip, which I save because I can use it for other things. And then I take each one of these strips. I can double up two of them and cut two of them on my cutter. If you don't have a cutter, then just use um, a ruler and scissors or a ruler and craft knife. And I cut these down to three and a half. This is really the only rule to an artist trading card is that you need to make these two and a half by three and a half because most people that trade store them in baseball card protectors. So you want to make sure that they are two and a half by three and a half. That's the only rule to an artist trading card. Other than that, the rest of it is up to you. Okay, so that's the first step, is to have your backing. Okay, anything you want it to be, you just want a sturdy piece of paper for your backing. Okay, for this particular one, I'm using book pages. So what I've done is I've taken my book sheets and this just happens to be a book that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I have cut all of the white space off of it. So the way that I've done that is I've used my trimmer again. I've got several sheets here. I've layered them up, got them even, put them in my cutter. Lined it up. <laughs> With book pages, I found that some of them cut better than others. <coughs> Sometimes it's better to start in the middle of the page and press your blade down and then cut out on either side. So push your blade down, cut out, and then go out because the 
paper, the paper sometimes just crinkles up on itself. Okay, so start in the center and then go out each direction and it cut through all of those pages just fine. Okay, so I typically will do a whole bunch at once. Same with my cards. If I'm going to make a bunch or if I'm going to make some at a later date, which I typically do, I'll just sit and cut a whole bunch at once so that I have it done so that the next time I, I can skip that step. Okay, so then the next step is to cut these pages down even further. So I'm going to take the first bundle, which should all be about the same size here, even them up again. Okay, now I like to keep, if you don't want a border and you want them to cover your, your backing all the way, then just cut them the same, two and a half by three and a half. I like to have an eighth of an inch border around mine. So I'm going to cut them down and leave a little border. If they're not all exactly the same, then I'm okay with that. So just, you know, keep in mind, if you want a border, cut them a little bit smaller. However much of a border you want, you figure out that math for yourself. Okay, I just did that wrong because I measured it to three and a half. So I'm gonna try again. This is really what I want. And save all your pieces because you can use those for other projects. I'm going to have some left at the end so I can line them all up at the top here. I should be able to get two of them. then I have that left so I'll hold on to that because you can use them for other things and so then when I go to use them or to line it up on here I have an eighth of an inch border all the way because I cut them a quarter of an inch shorter than my three and a half by two and a half by three and a half so see I have an eighth of an inch border all the way around Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and finish cutting all of these. Just like that. So I'm going to take three at a time. I'm going to cut my vertical strips first. Line them up. Trim. I always like to double check. Okay. And then I put them all down at the top so that they're uneven at the bottom of the script. And then this one. Just go slow at your blade, and then it shouldn't crinkle up your paper. If it does, you may have to use scissors. It seems like the older book pages seem to not cut as well that if you're using antique book pages. So I'm going to get all of my text lined up, or all of my sheets lined up at the top. When you go to the Dollar Tree and you're just looking for books to use in your art, since they're all a dollar regardless of the size, try to get the bigger books because then you're getting more paper 
for your dollar. If you're not looking for something specific. So again, I'm cutting that and then these should be pretty close. One is a little bit smaller, but I'll still try to use it or it's a little bit bigger actually, so we'll see. This one should be, these should all be the same. No, they're a little bit different, but that's okay. They're all pretty close. If you need to trim more off of it when you're making it, then you can do it then. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, it's a little bit longer, but I don't think that my trimmer can trim that little amount off. You can always put some little cut marks in it and then grab a pair of scissors and kind of even it out. Now I've got all of these cut. And if you find like on some of them that they're not full of text like that and you don't want to use it, you can always flip it over. Okay, so put that aside. And then you have to decide what you want to do with this. You can paint this. You can put sprays on it. You can stamp directly onto this. Um, you just need to decide what your next what your next um, thing is going to be. So if you're going to add wetness to this, I wouldn't do it on top of this because this recollection paper bleeds. If you want that look, then go ahead and you know and go ahead and glue this on here. But if you're going to do anything wet. To this I would do it off of this I wouldn't mount it yet I would wait to mount it if you're going to do anything extremely wet to this because if you go ahead and glue it directly onto this with glue you're going to reactivate your glue for one thing and anything really watery and wet that you do to this you're going to make your um, cardstock bleed so just keep that in mind you, you might want that effect of your cardstock bleeding but you also may want to like ink or paint the edges of this. So um, it might be an option to wait and do that last. So I, when I create them, I usually will do um, a few in a series and that's completely up to you. Meaning that I'll do some light cards. See like this one, it kind of ended. So, and then this side, so I might put that aside So you know you can do like four like, five alike, however you want to do it. And of course they're not going to be exact because they're not made on a machine, but you can do them similar if you're trading. And for these ones, I think what I'm going to do to keep it simple. I'm going to 
pull out this stamp set and I think I'm going to use this one that says the Lord will fight for you you need only be still and that's Exodus 14:14, 14, 14, which is this stamp I need my block And then I could definitely just use black ink on it, or I could add a color ink to it. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and use black, but I think I want more color to my paper. So before, and I could stamp it because I'm gonna use stays on ink, which is um, permanent ink that is water resistant and all of that but I want the ink to be on top of everything that I do to the paper. So I went ahead and stuck that to my block. But I'm gonna go ahead and spray these. So these are my sprays. Some of them are bought and some of them are homemade. So I think I want to do like a bluish, maybe blue and purple. Okay, now I know my, that this blue is pretty light blue. It's got some gold in it, and this purple is a homemade spray that I did, and it's got gold in it as well. So you want to kind of swirl these until you get all the mica powder off of the bottom. And I need to go grab some paper towel to cover my computer. Okay, make sure everything is out of the way that you don't want spray on. And I want to mask the centers of this a bit so that I don't get this purple in the center where I'm going to spray the blue. Okay, so. probably still going to seep in there, but I'll keep some of it out. This sprayer is marked chunky spray then spritzy spray now if you didn't want to spray or add any color to your paper, you could have just put your stamp right over the top of it, or used watercolor, or used anything else that you had. dab in the front of that.
guess I'm going to flip those over onto the paper towel. You can save your paper towels too to use for different projects. Okay, so I just gave it a little dry, but I want to knock some of that off because it's kind of dark. So I'm just going to turn it over. Okay, so I could stamp that image directly on top of this but I don't think it's going to show up really great because for one thing my ink is black and the writing on this paper is black. So I don't think that it would show up really really great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this back a bit with some watered down white um, paint. Or you could use silver, you could use metallic so that you still have that shine to it. So I just have a lid here from a jar, and this is a white metallic, and it's pretty thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, spray, which is a Tattered Angel in the color Pearl. I'm going to add this to my paint to thin it out. I'm just going to take this brush, it's a pretty coarse brush. I'm going to mix this up, and I'm going to add some more. I'm just going to whitewash this. Kind of knock that black ink back and my color back a bit. So it's still there, you can still see it, but it's going to give me a nice surface so that you'll still be able to see the image that I'm going to stamp on. And if you think that it's still too dark, just add some more white paint to it. Be careful because you know this book page paper really does soak up a lot of water and it can rip which isn't the end of the world. You could just do another paper, but you have put some work into it, so you want to not ruin what you've already done, but it's not the end of the world if it happens. Okay, so I think I've got just enough.
and use it all up. So see, it still has that glow, that glow to it, that shimmery mist to it, but the color's been knocked back. If you want it to be knocked back a little bit more, just add a little more paint, maybe not as much spray to water it down. Maybe just like go back over the center a little bit where you're mainly, I think that stamp is going to take up a whole lot of this paper. So I'm just putting a little bit more in the center. Okay, and then we're going to have to let this dry. Okay, so there they are. They're dry. You know, even the back sides of them are pretty. They look have that watercolor look. And don't let this worry you because when you lay these down, glue these down, they will straighten up and they won't be all crinkly. Okay, so as I was drying these, I was just kind of reading what some of these say. And, you know, it's hard to find books anymore that don't have, you know, bad words or negative messages in them. And that's okay when you're making words, especially um, when you're making art that has um, scripture or positive messages that God has given us through His Word, meaning the Bible. And this is life. Like, that's why people read books. Like, this book that I am using is called Grand Pursuit. And um, it says the story of economic genius, but it is a story. Um, and it does have some writings in it that aren't pleasing and you know but it's life and it's it's life and struggle and what a lot of people all of us go through life and struggle that is what life is so you're not always going to find a pleasing message in book pages and then to go ahead and stamp um, scripture on top of it it just reminds us that God is there for us and the message that he has given us in his word meaning the bible um, it's encouraging that just because these are the words that many of us have lived through so many of these kinds of stories that are on these book pages, there's always salvation to be had if you choose to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So don't ever let that discourage you to use pages that aren't... Um, that pleasing or stories that aren't always the happiest and stories that don't glorify God because that's life and sometimes people have to live their story and other and you know and to get to the point to where they seek the salvation of Jesus Christ so use these stories um, God wants you to use other people's stories to bring others or, you know, to use your story to bring others to Christ. 
that's what it's all about is sharing our stories with others to bring them to Christ um, that's what Jesus and all the apostles did throughout the entire Bi Bible is to use other people's stories and to use themselves and their walk in order to see what Christ brought to them and their walk to salvation. So I just kind of, as I was drawing these and reading the words on these little pieces of this book and the struggle just in these little pieces of the book, and then here I'm going to stamp this positive message right on top of it. That's kind of what the Bible does for us and the words that all of the apostles wrote in the Bible for us is we can kind of stamp out those stories of our past with a positive message that we are left with in the Bible. And um, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp out. Actually, first, I'm not going to stamp out a positive message on top of some of these negative words. I'm going to glue them on here first. And then I'm going to stamp them out with a positive message. So this is just a fine liner bottle. And I have Elmer's Craft Bond in here. And I am going to put some of this on here. Now it is watered down. So that's why you see it flowing from the bottle so well which is necessary for me because I have a hard time squeezing it directly out of the bottle so I do have to water it down a bit which is fine because then you get more more out of it. I just have to find a card which I always seem to have a hard time finding. So this is just an Ace Rewards card and I'm gonna do that to get the paper to lay flat and to stick down. Now if you have to go different directions to get it to stick on all the edges to spread that glue out, but a card works great for that. But see how crinkly the paper was before I put the glue on? I'm going to do that again. Heavier, of course, on the edges. Because you don't want your edges to lift. And I just inked these cards with chalk box ink. And I used Wicked Black. Just so that my paper would blend in with my base card. Okay, so I am again just getting that glue to smear and hold my paper down. I don't have any wrinkles in it whatsoever. It's all laid down completely flat. Okay. So I'm going to take it again heavier on the edges. Lay my card down. I have an eighth of an inch border around my paper. Take my card. Go in all four directions. Any glue will be pushed out with the card and then I just go along with my fingers and kind of wipe any of that glue. Okay, see how fast it is. So if you're not going to trade these and you're just keeping them for yourself, which a lot of people do, and you're only making one, then you can see how fast this actually goes. But if you're going to trade them and you're in a group, more than one people are going to be interested in your card. So it's good to make more than one if you choose to at that time because more people are going to ask you if you can remake that card. I guarantee you, more than one people are going to want that card. And that's your choice. You may only want to make one to have it an original. 
but if you choose later on that, yeah, I can make more of those, why not just make them in an assembly line like this? And then that way you don't have to go back and do the process and pull all the same supplies out. You've already got it done. And then when you trade them, you can just put the series up. Which one they like the best. Okay, so this is my last one. And as you get um, more confident in yourself and you start making more intricate kinds of cards, then it's not as daunting to think about going back and making that same card. You know, because usually once you make a card, you're like, oh, I want to move forward. I don't want to go backwards and make that same card again. I would rather move forward and make a different card. Well, you can if you know a lot of people want it and you feel like making that card but um, you know you may say no you know that series is over I don't want to make that card again and at least four people have gotten your card I'm gonna just dry these a bit so that the image is going on a, a dry paper now if you want more shimmer and shine on there than what the um, metallic paint is offering go ahead and spritz it some more with your shimmer sprays that would be totally fine. I'm fine with them like this, so I'm going to leave it. And then I'm going to take my stamp. I'm going to ink it up. Make sure I've got it the right way. Get it even on here. Now my surface isn't going to be very porous at this point because I've put layers on it. But I do want to give it a chance to kind of soak in there and get all the ink on there. to the other four. I'm rocking it a little bit. That one's not as straight, but that's okay. It's not always going to be perfect. And we don't want it to be perfect. Life's not perfect. Art's not perfect. You just do the best that you can. Just fits just perfectly on there so as long as you get your words lined up on there get your edges pushed down
my B is a little bit off. Okay, and I'm going to add your card. But I can fix it with a marker. Just kind of finish it off over there. And any, you know, marks that you see, you know, that you want to fix. It's not really even that big of a deal to me anyways, so. Just that B. There's, you know, this one. There's a couple. Like, I didn't push hard enough over on that side, so I'm going to fix this E. This one really didn't get pushed down hard, so I'm going to fix that one. This one. It's an easy, easy fix. I think we're good. Yeah, maybe I'll do my tea. Okay, so there we go. Simple, quick, easy, with a good message. All right, you guys, I hope you make some. If you do, please leave pictures over on my community Facebook page. The link is in the description box. I hope you all have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And as always, God bless. Bye-bye. I wanted to show you one more thing. Some people have special little um, printouts that they put on the back of their cards. And if you've got those, those are great. But all I do is I sign my name. I put my YouTube title. I put my state. My country. And then I put a title. I think I'm going to call this Fight Still. So you get and then I made five of these. So I'm going to put one of five. Today is 10 30 16. And that's what I put on the back of my cards. Okay, so the next one I would put two of. Five and the date and then up here would be the same I sign it my YouTube title my state my country the title of the card Okay, and I'll finish off the rest. And then that way they're numbered. And when I put them in my album in the online trade, artist trading card trade site that I'm a member of, I'll list them just as that. This will I'll take a picture of it and list it two of five. And if somebody wants it, then I'll trade it as two of five and I'll know exactly which one that person wants. All right, guys. Bye-bye.